Good morning, everybody. It's great to be with you on the Sunday morning once again, and thank you for joining us for service this morning. Such a privilege to bring the Word of God into your homes, and I know that we are all going to be thoroughly blessed by the Word of God. Before we get into the Word, however, let us just pray and dedicate the service to the Lord. So, Father, we thank you for another opportunity where your Word can be spoken. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will teach through me that I'm merely a vessel, a mouthpiece. So, Lord, you accurately speak your word, what you want your children to be feeding on today. Thank you that your word brings life. Thank you that your word brings change to our hearts. And, Lord, I thank you that as you use me as an instrument, Holy Spirit, I ask that you will think through my mind, that you will speak through my lips, that the word will be spoken with clarity and understanding comes to the hearts and the minds of each and every person hearing and listening to this message. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, family, this morning I want to talk to you about a topic, the title of my message, in fact, is called The Voice. And I want to speak to you around the topic of God's voice, the importance of hearing God's voice, recognizing God's voice, but also the importance of you using your voice that God has given you to call in certain things into your life. Or, in fact, rebuke situations that you do not want to have in your life. You know, there's a reality show called The Voice. And how The Voice works, it is a talent show. And the contestants will come up onto the stage. And they will perform or sing in front of judges. And these judges will be sitting on chairs that are faced away from the contestants. In other words, they cannot see the contestant that is performing or singing. However, as soon as the contestants start singing and they like, the judges like what they're hearing, they would hit a button, the chair would spin around and they would invite that person to come onto their team where that person will receive further coaching and further guidance in terms of their singing career. And at the end of the day, a voice champion is crowned after so many seasons. However, today I want to speak to you about how God continuously speaks to us. And so it is vital today that you and I are able to recognize and to respond to God's voice. You know, there are many voices in life today speaking to us, many voices screaming at us, wanting our attention. And it's so important that we listen to the correct voice in our lives, the voice of God. And so when we do that, we can be assured that it's a voice that we can trust and God's voice is one that we can follow. Just like responding to the right voice will lead you to your destiny and God's plan for your life, listening to the wrong voice or voices that speaks into your life will deter you from your destiny and God's plan for your life. You know, throughout the Bible, God has spoken to many men directly. I think of Abram, when God called Abram and made covenant with Abram and with the children of Israel, He spoke to Abram directly. He spoke to Moses, called him out of a burning bush, and He told Moses that Moses was to lead the children of Israel out of slavery, out of Egypt. He also spoke and He released Um, Elijah. Elijah, when he was fleeing from Jezebel that wanted to kill him, God instructed Elijah who to anoint as the next king of Syria, the next king of Israel as well. He also showed him who to anoint as the next prophet, and that would have been Elisha. And there are many others too in the Bible, if you have a look, that God spoke through to them directly regarding their calling and how they were released into their calling. So God spoke to many people directly. God is a speaking God. Right from the word go in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, you can read, God said on day 1, let there be light, and day and night was created. In verse 6 it says, then God said, and on that day, God created the sky. It was day two. On day three, in chapter nine, or verse nine rather, 
It says, then God said, let there be land and sea. In verse 14, day four, God said, let there be day and night. And you can see where I'm going with this. God spoke everything into being. He spoke the birds and the fish on day five into being. He spoke the animals into being. He created man in his own image by speaking it into creation. And God had made man in his own image. So God creates things and he speaks things into existence. And that is what you and I should do. We should speak things into existence. You know, the Bible says, call those things that are not as if they are. And so when God speaks things into being, the Bible says he's no man that he could lie. So when he says it, it is there, it exists. And so you and I, having been created in the image of God, we have got the same authority, the same power, the same creative power in our mouth. What we need to do is we need to use our voice and we need to speak. You know, even your, your salvation, you receive through speaking. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 says, If you declare with your mouth, in other words, if you speak, if you say that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you will be saved. Now have a look at what verse 10 says. I'm still reading Romans chapter 10, but let me read to you verse 10. It says, it's for your heart that one believes and are justified, but it's with your mouth that one professes to salvation. And here's the thing about your salvation. Without confession, without you opening up your mouth, using your voice, you cannot be saved. Because the Bible is very clear here that confession is needed for you and I to be saved. The greatest gift that God has given you and me is eternal life. And how do we receive that gift? We receive it by speaking it into being. You know, when God called Samuel, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, God called out to Samuel three times. Samuel didn't recognize the voice of God. He didn't know the Lord yet. He was serving in the temple. He was serving under Eli, or Eli and he was serving um, faithfully in the temple, doing all the work, whatever Eli needed to be done. You know, Samuel would do it. But yet, Samuel did not know the voice of the Lord. But after the third time, once Samuel responded to the Lord, and he said to the Lord, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. God spoke further to Samuel, and a conversation then could ensue. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10, it says, The Lord came and stood there, calling as the other times. Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And Samuel went from not knowing the voice of God to becoming the voice of God. Because if you remember, God called him to be a prophet to the nation. So God used his voice as a mouthpiece to speak the will and the plans of God. The Lord's voice is his presence. It's just like when you hear someone's voice, you know that they are around. You know, if someone, you hear them speaking, you know that person is in close vicinity. And so too, when God speaks, you know that he's right there. His presence, or rather, let me put it this way, his voice is evidence of his presence. And so I know that God is omnipresent. I know that he is always present. He's all over. But there is a difference in being present and being intimately present. You know what it's like. Sometimes you could be in a room with someone and that person physically could be there. But mentally, you know that person's far from where they are sitting. Their thoughts are somewhere else. Their mind is somewhere else. So, but intimately engaging with that person, grabbing their attention, speaking to that person, will assure you that that person's 
attention is with you. And so we need to pursue God. We need to pursue His voice. We need to reach out to God and we need to pursue the voice of God, the leading of God. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Jeremiah 29, verse 12 and 13, I'm going to read it to you from my Bible. It says in verse 12, Then they will call upon me and come and pray. Pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And so the instruction there and what the Bible is talking about here is how God's plans for Israel is to prosper them. But he says, if you call me, if you seek me, you will find me. And so it's, it's, it's God inviting us all the time to talk to him, to speak to him, to seek him. You know, the Bible tells us also in another place in the book of James chapter 4, verse 8, God says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Is God ever far from you? No, he's always there. But you see, it's that intimate, you drawing closer to God, that God then focuses attention on you. And so we need to expect to hear the voice of God. We need to know that God speak to us. You know, God don't just speak to a select few, as some would you want you to believe. God doesn't just speak these days through the pastor or the apostle or anybody in the fivefold ministry or someone that's full time in the ministry on staff. God speaks to you, child of God, directly. If we just incline our ear to hear what he has got to say. We need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, sensitive to His unctioning and His calling. We need to sharpen our senses so that when God speaks, we can recognize His voice. And just three things that I've just briefly noted here that we can do to sharpen our senses, to become more sensitive to the voice of God, more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And that is number one, we need to spend time talking with God, not always asking him for stuff, but in our prayer, speaking to him, telling him how your day was, speak to him like he is your friend, because God wants that intimate relationship with you. It's with reverence, of course. It is with respect that we address God, of course. But God wants to have an intimate relationship with you, child of God. So how do you become more sensitive to him? is by speaking to him. Number two, learn to listen to the voice of God. Just listen to that little small voice that God often speaks to you and recognize that when God speaks to you, it is not for you to be speaking back, but rather for you to be listening. And then number three, to become more sensitive to the voice of God and sensitive to the Holy Spirit is to read the word of God continuously. Get to know him intimately. How do you get to know God intimately? Is by reading his word. You see, family, if you do not expect that God will speak to you, if you think that you are not worthy of God speaking to you, if you don't believe that God will actually take time out to speak to you directly, you will never hear the voice of God. Because even when God speaks, you will always put it down to perhaps it's your own mind. Perhaps it's your own thoughts. This can't be God speaking. So you want to expect the vo to hear the voice of God. Know that God speaks to you intimately. Just like a father, a natural father, will intimately speak to his children. And that is how they build relationship. And so too, our Heavenly Father wants us to converse with Him wants us to have a conversation with him. You know, in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus says these words. He says, My sheep hears my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You see, recognizing and understanding that God speaks to us all the time will help us to be able to follow his the leading and his directing. When God speaks to us and we recognize the voice of God, 
we can then hearken to the word of God. Amen. You see, your, fa your words rather can either work for you or it can work against you. Your words can either invite the presence of God into a situation or it can invite the attention of the enemy into your situation. So the question is, who do you want? Who do you want the, to be there when you are going through things especially? You want the Lord to be there. And so your words need to line up with the words of God. In other words, speak the word over your life. Declare the word over your life. Even if the situation does not line up with it yet, you call those things that are not as if they are. For example, if you are under attack with your health and you are not feeling great, you speak to your body and you say, body, you will come in line with the word of God, which says, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. So are you now denying that you are perhaps sick and, and, and overcoming? No. What you are doing is you are speaking the word of God the way God wants you to speak. You are speaking that into your life. And therefore you are calling those things that are not as if they are. So a friend comes up to you and they ask you, so how are you feeling? And you're not feeling great. You're overcoming. If you say to that person, you know what, I'm sick, I'm not feeling well, and, and you leave it at that, you are speaking a defeated tone. But if you say to that person, you know what, I'm not feeling great, I'm overcoming. However, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. And I'm not moved by how I feel, but I'm only moved by faith in the Word of God. That is a different, a different way of saying that, yes, you are overcoming, but you are not focusing on the sickness. You are focusing on the victory. You know, in, in Numbers, this book was written by Moses and primarily to outline why the children of Israel went through the wilderness for 39, 40 years before they reached the promised land. It speaks there about the children of Israel and their lack of faith. It speaks about their complaining and their murmuring, despite all the, the, the miracles that they witnessed. You know, the book of Numbers is often referred to as the book of murmurings. It outlines the complaints of the children of Israel once they've left Egypt. And in Numbers 14 verse 28, God speaks to Moses after the children of Israel again had complained about various things. And they said that, you know, they said to Moses, you brought us, it would have been better for us to die in Egypt, but, or die in the wilderness. And then God says here in verse 28 of chapter 14, tell the children of Israel, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do the very thing that I heard them say in my hearing. You see, the children of Israel, if you look at the book of Numbers, chapter 14, if you go back to verse 3, if you just back up a little bit, they complaining here and they say, you know, it would have been better for us to die in Egypt or in the wilderness. God heard that. God heard that complaint. And not one of them that was of the age of 20 and older entered into the promised land because they got exactly what they said. They died in the wilderness. Because that is exactly what they said. Except for Joshua and for Caleb that saw the promised land because they were of a different spirit. They believed and trusted the Lord. They saw the promised land. But everyone else, 20 and older, they all perished in the wilderness. Their children entered into the promised land. But they did not. In Numbers 14, 29 to 30, it says, In this wilderness, your bodies will fall, every one of you, 20 years old or more, who was counted in the census and who has grumbled against me. Not one of you will enter the land I swore with uplifted hands. 
to make your home, except for Caleb and for Joshua. You see, friend, your mouth, wrong words, will keep you from your promised land. And the children of Israel, when they ventured through the desert, they overcame many things. They saw many things, many miracles that God had performed. They saw the Red Sea part, that they saw how God provided for them manna from heaven. They saw how God provided quail for them. They saw how God guided them by a cloud by day and a fire, a pillar of fire by night. They saw these miracles, but at every opportunity, they would complain and grumble against Moses and against Aaron. And God was not pleased with that behavior. You see, positive confession is very effective, but so too is negative confession. And so the scripture tells us that we must be slow to speak and quick to listen. I believe some people think that you need to be slow to speak and quick to listen means that you must never speak. No, we need to open our mouth. We need to address situations. Jesus again said, you know, speak to the mountain. Tell it to be removed. Tell it to be cast in the sea. And so we need to open up our mouth and come up against the devil. Because again, our weapons are not carnal. But one of the greatest weapons that God has given you is the word of God. And the word of God is most effective in the mouth of a believer. We need to speak the word of God. And that is why Joshua was told by God, Meditate on the word of God day and night. Do not the, let the word depart from your mouth. Because the word in the, in the mouth of a believer is something that can be used to slay and defeat the devil. And so God has given us a voice. He's given us a mouth. And God wants you and me to use the power in our mouth. He says life and death is in the power of the tongue. It says whoever loves it will eat its fruit. So the fruit that you will receive and eat from your mouth is whatever you speak. If you're speaking good things, positive things, if your speech lines up with the word of God, that is the fruit that you will eat. And so again, we serve a God that speaks things into being. Hey, he created the world. And everything in it by simply speaking. And God said, and there was. And so why don't you be intentional this week about what you say. Be intentional about speaking the word of God. And getting the word of God into your heart. You know, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Put the word of God in your heart. And so when you are squeezed, when life situations happen... What will come out of your mouth is what's in your heart. And if the word of God resides in your heart, that is what will come out. Well, family, I trust that you've learned something today. It was absolutely awesome to share this word with you. I'm so excited about this word because it once again just gives me another tool and reminds me that all power God has given me to defeat any situation that I may face. Well, before I go, I want to lead you in a confession. And the confession that I want to lead you in is one that we read a little bit earlier on. And that is Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. I want to give you an opportunity, perhaps for those of you who do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to, to confess the scripture after me and pray this prayer. The Bible says, let me remind you, it says, if you declare with your mouth, so it's important, child of God, that wherever you find yourself, that you declare, that you speak. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So why don't we declare Jesus as Lord? Why don't you close your eyes and pray this prayer after me? Father God, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. Today, I declare Jesus 
as Lord. And I believe that God raised him from the dead. I accept you, Jesus, as my personal Lord and as my Savior. Today, I invite you to come into my heart and to save me. Thank you for the gift of everlasting life. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, I want to congratulate you. What a great decision, the best decision that you have and will ever make. I believe that God heard your prayer. And if it comes from a sincere place, I believe that your life will never be the same again. The Holy Spirit now comes and He lives inside of you. The Bible promises us that. And I believe that God will give you the strength and the wisdom to follow Him. Well, family, I thank you for watching. I want to invite you to an, uh, an in-person service. We, our services are on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. We're out um, at 11 Candingon Avenue in Barbecue Downs. It's from the Pinnacle Waterfall College. And just come along, come in and enjoy a service with us. It will be great to meet you in person. God bless you and have a super awesome Sunday further and a great week ahead. Bye now.